sections. Uh, CA students have been working, <coughs> but mind you, not only those 49 sections, every master direction circular sometimes runs into 100 pages plus. And like that, there are lots of more than 30 or 40 master directions, uh, including the circulars and the PDIR circulars, everything. So please don't underestimate uh, the complexities of FEMA. It is as complex as the income tax. In income tax, at least you have right to appeal. In uh, FEMA, there is no right of appeal. Whatever RBI says is final. And uh, that's why it's very important to understand the literal meaning of FEMA. Don't go by if, but, comma, proviso, save as, notwithstanding, it doesn't work in RBI. The law in RBI is what he understands, the office understands, and what his seniors understand. They don't know whether we understand correctly or not. So I think this is just a big uh, warning to the young practitioners uh, who are going to start. And before the presentation, I see a lot of young, new faces. You have seen our uh, presentation. We would invite you. My president would like to invite you to become member of uh, a chamber which is celebrating our centenary year. We are in the 90th year. Uh, we have very small uh, fee of annual fee of uh, 2,000 per year and 1,000 for half year. Uh, I'll be very happy if you can join us and be part of the growing chamber ranks. Thank you. Uh, just on the presentation, I think uh, uh, you have seen today morning Mr. Uh, Rashmin Sanvi giving you about overview of FEMA, then Vishal giving you on the structure of the act and how it is administered. Now I'll be going into the regulation. I think most of the sessions now will be covering the regulation of FEMA different facets of business which is administered by FEMA. So this is one of the regulation. It is a very small regulation of just five pages. Uh, this is what we are going to deal with. I think this is the most important slide. If you understand this slide, almost 50% uh, of my objective is covered. The, the heading says entry strategy for a foreign entity. I think this is the first, uh, when a client comes to you for a meeting, he will ask you, uh, I wish to enter India. He, he, will, he uses a very vague word, right? I want to enter India, give me entry strategy. So then you need to ask him, what is the meaning of enter India? Would you like to start your sales in India? You want to explore India, whether your business can be uh, established? or you want to set up a joint venture or a foreign corporation or a technical uh, transfer agreement or a wholly owned subsidiary or a partnership firm, lots of questions you can ask. Then gradually you try to know what is trying to, what does it mean by I want to enter India. Subject to the language issues and interpretation issues, you know. A Chinese person says he means different, uh, European what he says when he wants to enter India is different. So it's a huge ball game. So now there are three options. One is as a foreign company you enter India, then you have three options, liaison office, branch office and project office. Then second option is you want to set up a company in India, then again you have a two options as an Indian company or as an LLP. As an Indian company you have option of either setting up a joint venture or a wholly owned subsidiary. What I am going to deal today is on the first part as a foreign company which is uh, setting up either a liaison office, branch office or a project office. It is not an Indian entity, it is a foreign entity which is just an extension of their business in India. Uh, the second and third part would be dealt by other speakers during the uh, sessions where they will be explaining detailed regulation which is FEMA 20 mainly. Uh, so I think on this anybody has question because this is the most critical slide. Uh, so that the concept should be very clear. When a customer comes to you, a client comes to you, or inquiry comes to you, you need to first ask, you want to come as a foreign company or as an Indian company? So as a foreign company, again, there are three options, liaison office, branch office, or a project office. Right? So anybody has any doubt on this uh, slide? Okay, great. So I think we can move. 
So basically, this is governed by FEMA 22. Uh, this uh, is a very small piece of legislation, but uh, it is covering these three options which are going to be undertaken by a foreign client in India. Uh, how do you set up? What I will do is uh, uh, just to give you the whole process, I will just run through you without you looking at the slide. If when, a, when a client comes to you, he has decided first assuming yes, you want to set up a liaison office or a branch office. So you need to tell him what are the activities which are permitted for a liaison office, what activities are permitted for a branch office and for a project office. It's very simple. For a liaison office, you need to ask him are you going to do business or you are going to explore the market in India. If he says, I am going to explore the market in India, I will not do any business, then Lydian office is the right, we also call it a rep office or a Lydian office. And that is the right uh, uh, option for him. When he says that he wants to explore as well as do business in India, buying, selling, yes, then you go for a branch office. And third option is project office. He gets a construction contract or an engineering contract or a software contract for a limited period then you can open a project office. The tenure of the project office only till the uh, time the project uh, period is mentioned in the agreement, it can't be endless. You can't sell the project for 20 years. Right? There is a mention of uh, say one year, two year, three year period in the contract. Once that period ex uh, uh, gets over, you need to go back to RBI or the AE, why you need to extend the period. Liaison office given approval for three years and then extended every three years time. Branch office there is no closing period or no, no termination period or no validity period. Unless you close it is valid. So these are the three major options. Liaison office is not considered as a permanent establishment under Indian law as well as the tax treaties with India signed. Branch office is considered as a permanent establishment income earned in India by a branch is taxable at 40% income tax plus surcharge and education says on the net income and same way for the project office is considered as a permanent establishment under Indian Income Tax Act as well as under uh, uh, the treaty and you need to pay a 40% tax on the net income. Okay, any doubt on these three uh, structures or these three options, anybody? Okay, uh, so so very important basic fundamental liaison office not taxable in India because it purely uh, non PE situation, purely uh, market survey or uh, just uh, exploration of the product in India or a business in India. Uh, branch office uh, simply is doing business in India, active business in India, and project office again performing active business in India. That's the main key difference. What does what do you do when you when a client comes to you? Uh, you apply uh, to the AD Bank category one AD Bank. Uh, AD Bank will check the contents. Uh, standard contents are your five year profit making for a branch office, three year for a liaison office. Your network criteria fifty thousand for a liaison office, one lakh for a branch office. Once you have gone through this criteria, you see whether you are in a 100% FDI route. Once you are on the 100% FDI route, you will recommend your case to RBI Central Office. Uh, just two years ago, we were actually filing with AD Bank and he was just sending it to RBI. But that has gone. RBI says, I will delegate my authority to the AD. I will not process it. You process everything. You send it to me before you are giving the final permission. So your first application goes to the AD. AD checks all those criteria. One, you are under 100% FDI. Second, uh, your activity of the parent company is under 100% FDI. Second, network criteria and profit criteria. Once that is done, he sees the KYC about the company, uh, what is the background, genuineness, who are the promoters, directors, leader, the KYC from the bankers of the Parent company, and all this is done he immediately applies to sends your FNC form, which is application form to RBI, and then recommends. I hereby recommend to give approval 
and along UI number, which is unique identification number, and then RBI reviews FNC. Prima facie goes to the website of the parent company, uh, what it is doing because parent company may be dealing, they may write, they are dealing in certain activity, but they may be dealing in defense or telecom or uh, secu private security or information broadcasting. So they would like to see whether those activities would be conducted by them in India or no, or certain activities which are prohibited under the FBI policy. So certain verifications are sought and then uh, they allow the UI number which is communicated to the AD and AD communicates it to the customer. So uh, this is how it works for branch office and affiliation office. And if you are not, then the, uh, uh, the option is to go to the RBI to apply under a government group, where the government will tell you that uh, these are the uh, reasons why I am eligible under 100% group. I am doing a defense of such activity, uh, but this is what I will not do it in India. I will give an undertaking and they will allow. In case of insurance company setting up a Reagent or a rep office or a bank, RBI has no role to play. You need to go to IRDA, and for banks, you need to go to the Department of Banking Regulation in RBI, not the Foreign Exchange Department. They will give the approval. And for the uh, project office, uh, it is a general permission. You don't even need to go to RBI. And uh, simply, there are conditions. One is uh, it has secured a contract from Indian company. Uh, the project is funded by inward remittances. It is funded or these are all or either or condition or cumulative condition, bilateral or multilateral agencies and the project is cleared by an appropriate authority in the sense the cabinet committee of economic affairs or FIPB or something like that. Or maybe a term loan is granted. They want somebody that the contract which is being granted has been uh, checked on a feasibility study genuineness uh, of the project which is being taken by a foreign company in India. And just simply, you say I want to do certain work in India or you want to market for a work in India, it doesn't work. You need to have a contract signed. And if not, then you need to go for a private for uh, Certain cases, whether it's large office, branch or project office, requires prior approval of RBI, which internally takes approval from various ministries, including Ministry of Home Affairs, uh, Ministry of External Affairs, and other ministries. One is to set up an office in uh, Jammu and Kashmir, Northeast region, and Andaman and Nicobar Island. This is a very critical area from defense perspective. Then, uh, principal business falls in defense, telecom, private security, information, and broadcasting. And uh, uh, another is NGO, NPO, or a government body of a foreign uh, foreign government. Uh, just to give example of NGO, NPO, we have lots of fundings uh, through the FCRA route coming to various uh, UBS trusts in India who are stopping economic development of the country, like the Narmada Dam. You know, for several years the dam was not being done. It was funded by somebody that dam should not, India, if dam comes up then India will progress and ultimately it may uh, see better uh, economic growth and they don't want that to happen. Or simply the POSCO project in Orissa, uh, 12 billion dollar POSCO project for the last 10 years it is not seen light of the day because there are funding which is coming from abroad that POSCO should not set up this project in Orissa because the other rival entities or certain other entities uh, don't look at it favorably. So that's why they put it any NGO, NPO or government agency setting up office in India. That's one of the prior category of the government. And lastly certain uh, entities from certain countries, they are I think citizens but they mean including the entities which is citizens or registered in incorporated companies of Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Afghanistan, Iran, China, Hong Kong, or Macau. Why Macau? Because actually Macau is uh, technically part of China uh, and uh, 
they considered politically also as part of China. Uh, we have discussed this three year track record for uh, uh, Lyagen office, five years for a branch office, net worth uh, for a LO50, for a branch office, one lakh US dollar. Uh, these are major activity which we have discussed. Uh, representing parent company at the agent office, what it can do. Representing parent company, promoting export and import, promoting technical collaboration, acting as a communication channel. From this you can observe, purely non-commercial activities can be done. No other activities other than commercial can be done by a agent office and that's why it's considered as a, not as a PE under either Indian income tax law or under the tax treaty with India assigned. The day uh, you violate the condition and start doing business or promoting business, then the issue of PE comes. We have seen cases of uh, Nike or Reebok where the tax department has uh, raided or surveyed the office. I won't say raided, they have surveyed the office of these Nigerian offices. They found so many contracts were signed in India. They found so many negotiations were done in India. They found the signing authorities were in India. They found the head office signatures were just being done here. Even though it was looked as if it was signed abroad, they were signing it in India. And with that, then they put attribution which range from 10% to 50%, where uh, they said this income is attributable in India. So, a lot of litigations are there. Uh, so, please advise your client, liaison office means a liaison office. Uh, you cannot exceed or you cannot uh, overstep the uh, activities which are permitted. Uh, so first thing we already discussed, commercial and business cannot earn any income, all expenses made by the inward remittance and cannot have any signing or any commitment powers on behalf of. Several case laws have uh, you know, uh, attributed from 10 to 50 percent and ultimately uh, they have settled around between 10 and 25 percent in most of the cases. Uh, the yellow can put FD for about a maximum six months and then ensure that you use that money uh, within three months time. And uh, transfer of assets uh, in case of an yellow require prior approval of RBI. This for the branch office activity, export and import of goods permitted, rendering professional or consultancy services, research work, uh, promoting technical and financial collaboration, acting as a buying, selling agent, rendering service in IT or software, technical support, mostly foreign airline and shipping companies try to come under the branch. Uh, very important uh, uh, understanding, a branch office is a permanent establishment in India. Entire activity of the branch office is taxed in India on the uh, rate of 40% plus surcharge in education. Okay, most important uh, don'ts for a branch office, it can't do a retail trading, it can't do manufacturing or processing activity. This is not permissible. Manufacturing and processing permissible unless you are in a SEZ zone that is permitted. Otherwise, it is not permitted. Branch can simply do import export, consulting services, technical services, IT software, and those activity. the project office, uh, as you know, all three of them are just an extension of the uh, parent company, there is no equity, it's just like a sales office or a branch office or admin office, no equity participation, uh, have a separate bank account, you can't change the bank account unless there is a prior permission of the previous AD and the new AD and you need to inform RPM and same way uh, you can put funds for a maximum period of six months.
Okay. Uh, so we have uh, covered until your client coming to your office. Uh, till that time, you educate him. You go to RBI, get the permission. So that's the first assignment which you got from the client. Right? Uh, most important part, you need to ensure the client will ask you, can I lease office or buy office at this stage? Most important, unless you have RBI permission, you cannot enter into a lease. He is allowed to buy, but they require the prior permission. And there is no point of him in buying. Uh, but on a general permission, you can have a lease up to five years period, uh, which is the, and then you can be renewed every five years. You can go on a lease. Now, what are the post formation uh, formality? First, you need to open a bank account. Uh, in the bank account, there are a lot of anomalies. Banker will say, I need PAN number first. So you will say, but then the PAN guy says, I want a bank statement to prove or an office to prove. So there are a lot of uh, things which run back and forth and ultimately you need to find a practical way out that you need to take care of address of your consultant temporarily, open a bank account, show that as an address, then apply for a PAN number, then go for a transfer of PAN uh, address once you have your own office. It's, it's a lot of issues. Same way for getting a digital signature. We need again a PAN of the uh, foreign chief representative who is going to be in India. I mean, <coughs> he won't have a pen, so you need to wait till he gets a pen to open office with ROC. So registrar of companies, you need to open within 30 days, you need to file a form with ROC, confirming your place of business in India. Now this all doesn't happen within 30 days. Practically, we have to pay an additional fine penalty, it goes up to 60 days roughly where you pay an additional uh, penalty for 30 days to comply everything. And most of the foreigners, uh, uh, they don't like to share their personal detail. The details which are asked by the pen department or by for DSC, uh, they require the utility bill of their home country or they want FRRO registration in India or they want lease agreement in India. Lot of details, many of the foreigners who are coming first time to you uh, may not like to share with you but it's a practical issue. Then, when is registration you need to do, subject to what kind of uh, business uh, is being opted, whether it's a project office, whether it's a line office or a branch office, you need to get them registered with various government office. These are the annual compliances uh, I am told by Reserve Bank of India as well as the GIT income tax as well as the Director General of Police only 10 or 20 percent of liaison office I am told there are more than 800 liaison office in India and I am told that only 10 or 20 percent of them are complying with everything most of them are not complying because either their consultants don't know or uh, the the uh, foreign companies are not look available in India, the chief representatives are not in India and because of that there is a huge non-compliance. Originally there was only one uh, RBI uh, we need to file and there was only one uh, income tax return was to be filed and then ROC. But now several authorities are asking to file several documents at various point of time and at various stages. In fact, uh, today somebody was saying what is correct. Uh, sir, yeah, please tell. Yeah. Yeah, which regulation? Yeah, I have with me. It is for only specified entities. Specified entities for specified No, no, what you are saying is only that within five days is that, but every yearly is for everybody. What you are saying is only for a certain country. Yeah, that, that I agree. But then for everybody has to file a yearly form. It is compulsory. Well, we have been filing year in, year out, and in fact, they are sending us letters. Uh, when we go for transfer of asset or something, 
uh, we get letter from RBI, where is your DGP filing? That's right, I know. Uh, we are practicing day in, day out. This is what the AD bank doesn't do it. Unless they do it. So let's, okay, I assume we are correct, uh, but uh, we advise our client to file it. Okay. Uh, okay, these are the uh, requirements for additional offices, uh, wherein uh, if you have more than one office, one of them has to be a nodal office, you can have a larger office or a branch office in Bombay, Delhi, Calcutta, Chennai, then one of them has to be a nodal office uh, and file one annual activity certificate, not four. This is the this part I need to highlight about NBFCs and uh, the construction companies. A uh, lot of construction companies were setting up reagent offices for marketing, and that was uh, an issue. Even NBFCs were setting up offices in India for marketing. In fact, they were doing transactions from those rep offices. So RBI said, "We'll allow you only for a one-time window of two years." After that one time window of two years, we request you would like you to convert either into a subsidiary or a wholly owned uh, or a joint venture uh, or close down, any one of them, but it can't continue endlessly. Okay, uh, I think uh, this is what we have uh, done more or less on the setting up part. Then the post incorporation procedure and the last part is on the winding up of the reagent uh, branch office. Standard condition is uh, the, there are assets in a reagent office, right? Second and most important is getting uh, uh, your banker to allow you to remit the money. These are the two most important parts for a reagent or a branch office. In that situation, for assets, there are two situations one is sale of assets. Second is transfer of assets. In both cases, they suggest that if you are selling above book value, it's a problem. If you are selling at book value or below book value, there is not a problem. So that is what generally they ask for: original cost, depreciated value, return down value, that is book value, and what price you are selling and to whom. If you are able to satisfy that, then selling is not a problem. Uh, second is uh, various conditions that there are no litigation in India, there are no cases pending against you, remittable surplus amount. And most important thing which has happened now is no income tax NOC is required, which for last three years almost nobody could close a reagent office because when you should go to income tax to take an NOC, they would say, okay, let me examine whether you have a P in India because you are a liaison office. I want to know for last three years what you have done. Give me a list of all the orders which are executed by head office. Who was in the head office? What turnover you did? What did you import it? Hundreds of questions from the tax office. And with that, almost for three or four years, nobody could close the liaison office. We have pointed out to RBI that uh, it's a non-starter. If you say income tax as a chartered account, I can give that based on return file, I have no liability in India. Uh, but uh, if you see income tax, it's impossible. So then they amended the rule. So now income tax NOC is uh, not required. Other than that, you take everything and you can close the agent office. So I, now it's moving very uh, quick and uh, give undertaking to them. In case there is a liability, head office will take care of it. And now it's moving quite uh, smoothly. And the ROC uh, compliance, they give you a closure certificate and the agent office or branch of the project office is closed. There are various documents which you file by at the time of closure. And the last is on the foreign nationals who come, most important, they need to register within 14 days from their first arrival with the FRRO in the city where they are located. And uh, then uh, need to comply with those PAN and all those details. Uh, most important, they should come on an employment visa, on business visa, generally FRRO is uh, not given. 
So they should, you should educate your client to see that when they come to India, they should come on an employment visa. So business visa is only for a stay of 180 days and not for more than 180 days. Employment visa can be one year, two, three years or even more, depending on bilateral relation between India and that country. Some country in their country gives three years, we also give three years. Some country they give one year, we also give one year. It's more a bilateral discussion. And the last part is on the social security status. India signed, we call it totalization agreement or social security agreement, where uh, you need to comply with the labor laws of mainly provident fund in India. So if there is an agreement, then there is no need. If there is no agreement, you need to comply with the PFI. Uh, I think I have finished uh, my slides. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, in case you have any questions, I will be happy to take. Or any adverse uh, points? Uh, actually, uh, if it is for a project, if there is an agreement between the head office or a foreign company and that person that you are appointed as a consultant to see and explore our base in India, then it's a contract, so there is no creation of agreement. But if it becomes an employee, and even though employee role is uh, mainly to support certain things for a short term period, three months, six months, is not a problem. Uh, but if it is a continuous process, then it's not permitted. And you have to open a liaison office or a rep office. But uh, there is no machinery to check. Uh, and there is nobody, unless your competitor, uh, that fellow goes on distributing cards at every exhibition, conference, and says uh, I have office in India and some competitor checks on the MCA website that there, there is no such company which is registered in India. He may complain to various authorities and it could be in trouble. Otherwise practically nobody comes to us. Um, lots of people are doing this. Thank you, Inej Bhai. For excellent uh, exposition on the entry strategies. I think so all the participants have learned about this uh, the strategy about the opening of the LO branch office and head office. And uh, I think so it was a very, uh, uh, in a very simple and basic manner it was explained. And uh, it will go a long way to all of us. I request Varsha uh, to propose the hearty word of time. And see, all must be aware that uh, since India is attracting foreign investments from across the globe, the million dollar question each time the client has is what should be the India strategy, entry strategy, and what should be the form of any company form. Uh, in this presentation, Inish Bhai has shared his rich experience on this subject and dealt with the regulatory aspects pertaining to establishment of land office, branch office, project office, and also guided us on important critical matters that should be observed by us while advising the clients. Uh, during the entire process, right from the incorporation, its subsistence, and then for uh, the closure process also. We are indeed thankful to you for an intimate session, sir. I request all of you to carry out this word of thanks with the big round. We are very much. Thank you.